Hi everyone, welcome back to the course on Introduction to Material Science and Engineering offered by Edipedia World. The previous set of lectures we discussed about the different kind of imperfections that can be present in a solid material, right? In the next three lectures we will be discussing about the different diffusion processes. What is diffusion? We will understand the basic phenomena behind it. You might have already learned about diffusion in your junior classes, but the diffusion you might have studied would have been mainly in the case of gases, right? If you spray a perfume in one part of the room, it spreads throughout the room. That is due to the diffusion of the gas molecules. Similar to that phenomena, diffusion can take place in the case of solids too, right? So to begin with, let us understand the basic phenomena of diffusion. Diffusion is process of mass transport, right? It's mass transport by movement of atoms or molecules from a region of higher chemical potential, from a region of higher chemical potential to a region of lower chemical potential. Now, uh, this seems like a heavy term. What does it mean? We are not going to go into the details of what high chemical potential and what low chemical potential means, but for most of the cases, maximum number of cases we will encounter, high chemical potential will correspond to high concentration. Okay? High concentration and low chemical potential will correspond to lower concentration. Therefore, diffusion is the process of mass transport by movement of atoms or molecules from a region where those particular type of atoms or molecules are in higher concentration to a region where they are in lower concentration. This is the same thing which happens during mass transport diffusion in the case of gases. This is the same phenomena which will happen during diffusion of solid atoms within a solid. Fine. Now, what are the different types of diffusion? Broadly speaking, there are two different types of diffusion. One is interdiffusion or alternatively known as impurity diffusion. And second is self-diffusion. Now, the names might be self-explanatory, but just to give you a clearer picture, interdiffusion means that we have a particular material, let's say iron. Okay. And if there are some carbon atoms presented in it, then the carbon atoms may diffuse from one region to another region then such a diffusion is called interdiffusion or impurity diffusion because the bulk in this case is iron but within the iron actually the carbon which is the impurity material impurity atom that is diffusion so it's called interdiffusion or impurity diffusion whereas if we have a material let's again assume iron and a particular iron atom moves from one region to it diffuses and comes somewhere over here so this is a diffusion of iron atom within a iron bulk from one region to another region now this is self diffusion why so because the atom which is diffusing is the same atom as the bulk material so it's called self diffusion okay with this background, let's discuss what is the diffusion mechanism, exactly how does diffusion takes place. Okay, we understand that diffusion takes place due to concentration difference, but what exactly is happening? So what is happening is that during diffusion, a step by step movement of atom takes place from one lattice side to the adjacent lattice side, right? So it is moving step by step. Suppose this site is vacant, so atom will move from here to next site and it will keep on moving one step at a time. So what are the requirements for diffusion to take place? The requirements are there should be a adjacent vacant site, right? If there is no vacant site adjacent to the atom which needs to move, where will it move to? So there has to be a vacant adjacent site. And secondly, there has to be sufficient energy to break bond with the neighbors. What does that mean? 
That means that suppose we have a scenario like this. Imagine we have a scenario like this. So this particular atom can move to the adjacent side here which is a vacancy. But for that to happen, this atom needs to break its bond with its surrounding atoms. Only when this atom has sufficient energy to break free with all the adjacent bonds, will this atom be free to move from its original location to the adjacent vacancy. Right. So the two conditions for diffusion of an atom to take place, one, it should have an adjacent vacant site. Second, it should have sufficient energy to break bond with its neighbors. Now you'll ask, where will the atom get energy to break the bonds? It's uh, quite a genuine question. So the energy which it gets from the vibration, atomic vibration, is the energy which provides the required energy to break the bond. So atomic vibrations, which is ever present, whenever the temperature of a material is more than zero Kelvin, it will have atomic vibrations. And the atomic vibrations provide the energy to break free from the bond. Now, if the temperature is very low, the atomic vibration will be low, thereby the atom want, might not have enough energy to break free from the bonds. But if the temperature is high enough, that means more atomic vibration, easier to break bond, and easier for diffusion to take place. So from this logic point of view, you can think that by increasing the temperature, higher temperature, we can increase the rate of diffusion. Okay. So this clearly gives you an idea about one of the important factors which determines how fast a diffusion process will take place in a solid. That is the temperature at which the material is. Lower temperature, lower diffusion rate, higher temperature, higher diffusion rate. Now let us see the two different mechanisms of diffusion. The two different mechanisms which we will discuss is one is vacancy diffusion and second is interstitial diffusion. As the name suggests, vacancy diffusion obviously has something to do with vacancies. Right. So here I have drawn figure of atoms arranged at its lattice sites, but whenever the temperature is higher than absolute zero, as we have seen in the previous lectures, the material will have certain vacancies. So in this example, I have a vacancy over here in the material. Now what happens during diffusion? Step by step movement of an atom takes place from one lattice site to adjacent lattice site. Okay, so this particular atom can break free from the bonds here by vibrational energy and then this atom ultimately moves to this new location. Okay, so what is happening is the atom moves from here to here and the vacancy moves from this location. Initially the vacancy was here and it has moved to here. So the direction of movement of atom and vacancy is opposite to each other. If vacancy moves to left, the atom will be moving to right. And as we can see here, the more the number of vacancies available, easier will be it for the atoms to diffuse because there will be more available vacant sites where an atom can move to. So temperature has dual role to play. With increasing temperature, one is that the vibrational energy increases. But not only does the vibrational energy increase, but also the vacancy concentration increases. This we have discussed, the temperature dependence of vacancy. The number of vacancy increases with the temperature. So when the temperature is rising, what is happening is vibrational energy is increasing. It is easier for atoms to break free, but also the vacancy concentration is increasing. Thereby, there will be more number of vacant sites available for the atom to move to. So ease of concentration increases 
ease of uh, movement of vacancy rather ease of movement of atoms into vacant site increases with increase in temperature now here this atom can be the bulk atom or it can be a impurity atom it does not matter right so a vacancy diffusion can take place in self diffusion case as well as inter diffusion or impurity diffusion case fine the only condition is that during vacancy diffusion the atom moves from its original site to a adjacent vacant site now that we have understood what is happening during vacancy diffusion let us see the other mechanism the alternative mechanism of diffusion which is interstitial diffusion what are interstices interstices are small pockets of empty space available between atoms right when you pack atoms suppose you have a fcc structure there packing fraction is 74% which means 26% is empty in bcc we saw that the packing fraction is 68% which means 32% is vacancy so these vacancies though are smaller in size are available in abundance within the material because in fact as we can see they are 26 and 32% of the whole space right so if the impurity atom if a external atom is small enough then that atom can actually rest in a interstitial site rather than the lattice site so here for example let's suppose this is a iron carbon example so iron atoms are much larger than carbon atoms so carbon atom can lie at the interstitial voids available okay and this can move from one interstitial void to the adjacent interstitial void for that it need not break bonds it need not have a vacancy there are abundant number of interstitial sites available throughout so it is much easier for the atom to have interstitial diffusion the catch being that the atom has to be small enough to be accommodated in the interstitial void right so normally interstitial diffusion takes place when the particle which is diffusing or the atom which is diffusing is small enough which means it has to be a impurity material because the same material particle will be large and it cannot be normally placed in the interstitial site so it should be a impurity atom normally and that will lead to a new path for diffusion to take place now generally as i said interstitial diffusion is much faster than vacancy diffusion why because the interstitial atoms are smaller in size easier to diffuse as well as the number of interstitial sites are far far more than the number of vacancies in a given material with this i just want to make a point that this does not mean that the interstitial diffusion cannot be self diffusion it can be self diffusion but it will be energetically very difficult for the atom of same material to diffuse by interstitial diffusion mechanism okay so today in the lecture i introduced to the idea of what diffusion is i said that diffusion can take place in a solid it does take place in a solid the two mechanisms are vacancy and interstitial diffusion and the diffusion can be of the self diffusion kind or the impurity diffusion kind and i have roughly tested upon the fact that temperature is a very very important criteria to define how fast a diffusion process will be taking place with this i will close today's lecture next lecture i will continue to build on the knowledge further about diffusion processes in a solid material till then have a great day goodbye